This is the second time I'm recording this video because the first time while editing the video, I realized that I was probably high while recording it because I kept calling the Trollocs the Tinkers. I kept calling Rand Matt. I kept calling Loyal Logain and um, Feldara Telvara. So it was really hard to watch that video, even for me. So it was going to be impossible for you guys to watch it. So here we are recording it for the second time. Hey guys, my name is Alan Fox. Welcome to my channel. And we just hit a thousand subscribers. It's insane. Oh my God. <laughs> I am so happy and so grateful for every single one of you, especially because I did not ask anyone to subscribe to my channel. None of my family members are subscribed. None of my friends are subscribed. No one subscribed to this channel. No one even knows that I make videos. Um, so every single one of you is here on their own free will. So every single one of you is so, so, so special to me. And I just wanna thank you guys for being here. I just wanna thank my mom for supporting me through everything. She is a very wonderful mother and I'm gonna continue to talk about her for the rest of my life, whether you guys like it or not, because some people do find it really odd that I talk about my mother a lot, but she is the most amazing mother a person could ask for. She has supported me in a lot of things. She's literally stayed up late to upload my videos. Like it can't get better than that. So I love her. And I want to thank her and I want to thank you guys. And we just hit a thousand subscribers. It's, it's amazing. And today we're going to be talking about the eighth episode of The Wheel of Time, the last one. And let's begin. So the episode began 3,000 years ago at the birth of Queen Elizabeth. And for a second there, I was completely thrown off. Not because of the birth of the Queen, no. It was just like so accurate. Because for a second there, I was like, you know, it is 3,000 years ago. How the heck are they so developed? How the heck is the pin that the Dragon Reborn is wearing so fine? You cannot forge something like that 3,000 years ago. But then suddenly I was like, wait a damn second. The stuff we have from 3,000 years ago, it is quite remarkable. Because look at the freaking pyramids. We have still not been able to discover everything about the pyramids. You literally cannot destroy the pyramids. They're insanity. They're standing on sand. It's, it's insane. So if the people from four, 3,000 years ago were able to build the pyramids, then I am ready to believe that they were able to fly as well. Because we do know that they knew magic. So, you know, I'm really glad that the previous dragon for, was from 3,000 years ago and that they were so developed because freaking people from 3,000 years ago were probably more developed than we are. I'm sorry, what? Caging the Dark One serves his pride some way, somehow. Okay, explain this to me. Having the Dark One on the loose is somehow better than serving someone's pride. Like, I would rather serve someone's pride than have the freaking Dark on the loose. And I know what you're saying about the Dark One being exposed to the One Source and corrupting it, but let's be reasonable here. The Dark One went ahead and corrupted the Source, but he only corrupted half of it. Just the men. And not all men can channel. So it's like a very small part of the world that is corrupted. Women are safe, the rest of the world is safe, and the Dark One is now caged for the next 3,000 years. Are you fucking on drugs if you don't want to do that? I mean, you gotta lose something to gain something. I mean, do we have any alternative plans? I mean, if we could do anything about the Dark One, we would have done it by now. So clearly we cannot kill him. So obviously we're gonna do something, like cage him. What are you talking about? Like she should have said like, oh my God, that is a big risk. But what did she mean by, it serves your pride? What pride? Speaking of the Dark One, I would like to confess that in the previous recording, I kept calling the Dragon Reborn the Dark One and the Dark One the Dragon Reborn. So, yeah. <laughs> I think it mostly came from the fact that when I looked up the actor for the Dark One, this popped up. I mean, am, am I missing something? Like, am I in for a big surprise? We don't know yet. Speaking of the previous Dark One, though, he is fine like he is amazing he literally has experience written all over his face like he knows what he's talking about he can channel he's not mad he dresses really fine 
The suit's amazing. The pin's amazing. It's creaseless. He's really handsome. That's where Lance said he was born. It looks like it's been that way a thousand years. 40 at most. So Lance 40. I don't know what I was expecting. Of course he's 40. <laughs> but I'm really glad to see Marquia in the darkness. I mean, I would much rather lose my kingdom to the darkness, to like mythical forces, than lose it to a human army. Because then, you know, at least the guilt is not there. Because how do you fight the darkness? You're only like, you know, I, I tried my best, but I couldn't, I couldn't win. Well, with a human king, you're like, damn. Like, I lost. And then you have to watch them rule over your kingdom. So it's like really bad. Unless you lose a war to a human king and then the kingdom is taken over by darkness and it kills all of them. Now that is cool. That is cool. Your revenge has been taken. I mean, who asked you to come and fight with me and take my kingdom? Unless I declared war, in which case... um. It serves me right that I lost my kingdom and then it serves you right for, you know, joining me in that war. So yeah, I guess both of us should pay for fighting and like spreading bloodshed. I can show you how. You would let me go without you. Lan, darling, we barely know each other. Until last night, we did not declare our liking for each other. You cannot be expecting me to go on a suicidal mission with you. What we feel for each other is probably lust. It's not love. I, I, can, I can assure you, and I reassure you, it's not love. The wisdom never wets. Sorry to interrupt, but I uh, just want to let you know that I am not a wisdom, so... I will hate the man you choose. So by that law, I should hate Nynaeve. And I will love him if he makes you smile. But she does make you smile, you stoic border, so I guess we love her. But you shouldn't lose hope, you hopeless romantic, because Moraine is currently on a suicidal mission. Any minute now, she can die and you can jump to Nye. And then you can tell Stepin how easy it is to jump from one woman to another when you love both of them. Actually, we decided it was lust. Sorry, my mistake. It's lust. I'm not a nice die, and neither am I a warder, and nor have I read the book, so I don't know exactly how the bond works. So Moraine has shielded her bond with Lan. So if she dies, when Lan finds her body, what is he going to feel like? Is he just going to feel like he lost a companion? Or is he going to feel like something broke inside of him, like Stepin felt, like he, he portrayed it really well. It really felt like something broke inside of him. So how, how would Lan feel with the bond shielded? But at the same time, I think having had the bond for so long, the absence of it might make him feel empty, which is why I think they were so keen on bonding Stepin with Alana so that, you know, he would feel that energy again. So I'm not sure about this, but this is how I once described bonding um, in my book, Cavies on a Stick. You should read it. Available. Link in the description box for free. So yeah, in, in that, when a bond broke, I wrote it as something broke inside of him. And when I wrote those words, I literally felt like something broke inside of me. So I kind of, I think I know what it feels like. Like I at least have an idea of what it might feel like to have a bond break. I don't know. But uh, do let me know if you know about shielded bonds. Let me know what it feels like. <laughs> the dark one looks so ridiculous in a suit. I mean, I look ridiculous in a suit, but the dark one looks ridiculouser. More ridiculous. I think we need to appreciate Randall Thor for the amount of courage he showed. I mean, throughout the episodes, he has proved that he is a courageous person, but the amount of courage it takes to shoot the bloody dark one in the freaking eye, that takes a lot of courage. Even though I always say, I'm like, aim for the eyes. If somebody attacks you, poke their eyes out or in, whatever you prefer. So, but to do it to the dark one, that is... That is just genius. I mean, at the same time, like, how can you hurt the Dark One? Like, you don't have the power to hurt the Dark One with an arrow. It's like shooting a gun at Superman, but you still do it. It still takes a lot of courage and maybe a lot of stupidity. I, I don't know. How do you pronounce stupidity? I can't say it. It's like a very hard word for me. Stupidity. 
Stupidity. I don't know. You look nothing like him. Oh, tell me about it. The previous dark one literally had experience written all over his face and now they present us with this. Especially because Moraine Sedai said, oh, you will be able to channel the fear and the adrenaline would do it all. I'm sorry, Moraine Sedai. You're putting the fate of the universe into the hands of fear of my emotions. I am a very unstable person, Moraine Sedai. You cannot be trusting my emotions. Like... I would be crying one moment, laughing the other, being angry. Like, what if, what if I'm not afraid of the dark one? What if the dark one comes to me dressed like a fairy? I'm not gonna feel afraid then. Like, are you kidding me? I mean, the dark one literally came to him like America's concept of a Jewish guy and that is nothing to fear. So you cannot be expecting me to feel afraid and just be able to channel. Like, if I know that I'm supposed to channel based on feeling afraid, I'm not gonna be able to do it. Like the moment I start thinking about the fact that I breathe every two, three seconds, my, 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 my nose is like, nope, we're not breathing anymore, Ellen. I'm not breathing anymore. This is a dream. Well, there's always the option of hurting yourself because it doesn't hurt, but um, you do wake up. And even if you don't wake up, you do realize that it's a dream because it didn't hurt. Like one time I got butted by a goat and it didn't hurt. So I was like, oh, it's a dream. Stubborn as ever, lose. Loose. This just gets richer and richer because my favorite name is actually quite similar to Loose. Lan. No, I'm totally kidding. <laughs> my favorite name is Lev and it's really similar to Loose. So it's like, my God, at this point, what's not to like? This is a dream. <laughs> um, I was suggesting more of a palm slitting in case it was the reality, but uh, thank the big lord that it wasn't. Dreams have great meaning, especially here, so close to his touch. It was the dark one. His nightmare was coming to reality, and Randall Thor decides to look away. I'm sorry. You wake up like you did in your nightmare. Moraine asks you the same darn questions that you did in your nightmare, and you decide to look away, like not give her like a heads up or something like, Moraine, duck, nothing. I mean... Let's say the dark one is like still trapped. What if a fate had come out? What if a trollop was behind them? Randall Thor, what is going on in this series? Like freaking everyone is underestimating the dark one so much. My anxiety is through the roof. Like. This is a so angry elf. It was made before the breaking of the world. When they showed this statue in the first episode, I thought that this was something personal, but of great importance. Um, and now that we obviously know that this statue is something that important, I was like, Moraine is simply allowed to carry this around town? And that's when I remembered. Moraine has an affair with the Emelin Seat. These are the perks of dating the Emelin Seat. I mean, it just doesn't make sense to me, the amount of decisions people make based on love or should I say love making Moraine is over here deceiving every other Aes Sedai and you just like trust her like what makes you think that she would not deceive you one day Miss Emelyn Seat like how do people put that amount of trust in other people I could never I have like major trust issues <laughs> the amount of decisions that have been made based on love making does not make sense to me the amount of wars that people have fought based on lovemaking. Like, there were two wars to get Cleopatra. Like, two wars simply because a king was horny. Like, can you imagine? Can you imagine a king going to his soldiers and be like, really horny for Cleopatra right now, we're going to war. And the soldiers just get up to fight. Like, I know we're gonna get a lot of land and a lot of riches out of this war, but like the main purpose here is that the king is like really horny for Cleopatra. It just, I love people. I do. I just... Not this blindly. Just that. I don't know if Ran was actually happy or if he was being sarcastic. But that is like literally my mood. This is how people feel around me. You never know if I'm being sarcastic or if I'm happy. Because my mother literally comes to me a lot of times and she's like, Elnif about that. Were you being sarcastic or do you actually mean it? And like she literally triple confirms with me sometimes. And it's like so odd. I'm like... 
what is it about this face that makes you think that I'm not serious? And she does make this mistake a lot of times. Like, I'm really serious about something and she thinks I'm joking. She just doesn't do it. And then sometimes I am joking and she thinks I'm serious and she just does it. So I think I need to get more in touch with my emotions. My lady, why are you smiling? That branch could have crashed on your head had you been two steps ahead. And she came to my room at night, alone, and she beat me with the one power. Oh my god, does Christian Grey have an Azhar sister he never told us about? Lashes of air and fire. Also not Christian Grey, because his contract prohibits the use of fire. Shouldn't have read that book, but I did read it and... Lord be praised, I think I should pick up the holy books now. I grabbed the power myself and I stopped her. Without even thinking about it, without even trying. As I previously stated, that I'm no Aes Sedai, so I have never had experience with magic. But once I was writing about it and I was like, how do you use magic? So that's what I thought, you know, it's supposed to be simultaneous. It's supposed to be a part of you. Like you never tell your hand to grab your hair, it just does it. So I thought, you know, magic would be like that as well like you don't think about it you just do it just like don't even have to move your hands like you just do it read my book just do it oh my god i forgot this one has a death wish lan i know you have this ionic bond with moraine but what do you plan to do once you get there no one apart from the dragon can survive the dark one so what are you gonna do there but I guess it's also like nice that he is like loyal towards Moraine. It's almost like the captain of the ship sinking with the ship. It's like, but you know, they do that because of dishonor, not because of love for the ship. So I guess I, I, I like really, it's beautiful. The, the bond between the Aes Sedai and the water, the water wishing to die, protecting the Aes Sedai and the Aes Sedai being allowed to protect their waters with the one power. So I think it's a fair deal. I like how he like stopped for a second, but he like did nothing. Because if he had expressed any emotion, I would have been like, no, not that, that one would have been better. But to just look at it for a second and then move away, like my man has his priorities straight. But um, I just really wish he gets Markia back. I do, you know, feel really heartbroken when a lot of kingdoms break and a lot of kings fall. But on other times, there are some kings that are so ridiculous. I'm like, yes, you deserve to have your kingdom taken away from you. But with some good, brave, honorable, loyal, and true kings, I hate it when they lose their kingdoms. That army kept him safe through hundreds of battles. And his father through hundreds more. And his father... I need my armor today. It is so beautiful how he refused to wear the armor because his forefathers wore that armor and they won. He's about to walk into a lost battle. He, he's like 99% sure that he's going to fall. So to honor the armor and not wear it, that is absolutely beautiful. There are so many honorable kings and I respect all of them. A lot of you hate monarchy, but if it's a good king... What's there to hate? We have, you know, prime ministers and stuff. As long as they're a good person, I love them. But then there are some that are so ridiculous. Like, throughout their lifetimes, they do not put an ounce of anything into the kingdom. And they continue ruling. And I'm like, why did he even choose to be a ruler? Like, if you were not going to put in any effort, spare us. Don't be our ruler. That looks so peaceful and so beautiful. And I always wanted to live in like a small cottage on a mountain. Until my mother came along and crushed my dreams. She was like, I'll never whatever bear attacks you. And I was like, okay. You know Matt's never gonna find time to make a proper one for Joya, no matter how many times he says he will. <laughs> so Matt had near death experiences and yet he decided to remain careless. And then you tell me that I should go easy on the fellow. I cannot go easy on him. I cannot. <laughs> it's 
stupid move, really. I mean, if Moraine had channeled to, like, create a dome shield around her and Rand, it would have made sense. But did you honestly think you could channel enough to hurt the Dark One? Look at you now. He, he's, like, done something to you. He's, she's probably stilled. Is she stilled? I guess, like, it, it could be curable. I mean, she is in a relationship with the Emelyn Seeds, so I'm pretty sure that she would go to the end of the world to make sure that Moraine gets her magic back. But for the time being, look what he did to you. I know that, like, she's supposed to act out of fear. Like, she was, she just channeled out of fear. So, yeah, this is why I do not trust fear. You make stupid decisions when you're afraid. I've said it before, but I'll happily repeat myself. Bows and arrows are the ultimate weapon. They're like guns. You stay in the safety of your own place and you're able to shoot people. I know that like swords are like much more fun and probably like, I don't know why people like swords better. I like swords better, but still bows and arrows are like, m like much more convenient. Like literally, I just discovered that the great Genghis Khan had an empire twice the size of Alexander the Great and four times the Roman Empire. It was the greatest empire ever. And it was because he used bows and arrows. And also because he literally slaughtered entire villages. But, um... <clears throat> How can we just sit here while everyone else is willing to fight? Bullshit! All of it! The way of the leaf! Perrin, darling, sweet pea, when did you become a tinker? Who's stopping you from fighting? You didn't even like the tinker's food. And you saw how well the no violence thing worked out for the Tinkers. Alan's probably dead now. Get up and fight. You're freaking wolf for crying out loud. Get up and fight. How can we just sit here while everyone else is willing to fight? I'm standing. You must oh, stand. Bullshit. Loyal, I love you. I do. And I have used this joke many times, but there is a time and place. And now is not the time for jokes. Here's a little clip from my previous recording to prove that that video was good for nothing. Logan talks so slowly, so patiently, as if we don't have tinkers at bay. Like, if he talked that slowly to me, I would shake him senseless. I can show you how. Yes, teach me how so that I may double cross you and imagine a world where you don't exist. Hey, stop! What is it? Sweet Pea, what were you thinking? You know that the city is under attack. You know that dark friends exist. And yet, the moment you saw the merchant, you decide to follow him. You should have asked a god to follow. You should have asked the gods to go and check on him. Or should have just channeled you in a wolf. Nothing. Perrin, do something. <laughs> Oh my god, where's Tom when you need him? He could fight a fade like a pro. And I really hope he's alive. Like, I'm getting this feeling that he's alive. So I really hope he is. I was not expecting the spell to be of that magnitude. They literally wiped out the Trollocs. Explain to me why they decided not to put the ladies outside of the barrier. I mean, maybe they didn't know Nynaeve's strength at that point, but still, come on. If they had the, the, the ladies had been outside of the barrier, they would have been able to kill maximum amount of Trollocs, and then the men would have came out and fight the rest of them. That would have been much more convenient, much less deaths, you know? So, like, at most, five women would have died. So now, like, half of the city's dead. The king's dead. What about what she wants? I think we can all agree that Ranal Thor has had the greatest character development. In the first couple of episodes, he didn't want Nynaeve to be an, to be an Aes Sedai of wisdom. And he was like really fussy about everything. But now he is selfless. He was like, that woman is not the woman I love. He's smart. He's making really great decisions. And yes, Ranal Thor, come through. You have been a great character for the past six episodes. Like for the majority of the series. So yeah. Oh, look at that, Perrin. Loyal, dead now because you decided to be a tinker. You clearly saw that the thing that saved you and Egwene from the White Cloaks was you turning into a wolf. I don't know what powers you have, but you're something 
You should have done something about the merchant, about the fades, and... And why did the merchant leave him? I mean, he knows that Perrin is special. He knows all five of, the, five of them are special. So why did he just leave Perrin? Like, kill him or take him with you? He just left him. Balance means that you will turn to the shadow, some of you. Open your eyes and your ears, Randall Thor. Look what Matt is doing. Egwin said it. She was like, Matt is not going to go back to Beltane. Look at him. Wandering around in his darkness. And I just, I just don't like Matt. Seriously, if I was Leandrin, and if I had came across Matt, not a second thought, I would have gentled him. Like, this guy cannot be the Dragon Reborn. If the Dragon Reborn has taste as terrible as this, to choose this guy for the reincarnation, nah, we don't, I don't think we need the Dragon Reborn. So, I'm like, I, I want to read the books because I don't like to hate people. I, I don't hate anyone, probably, except for some people, except for the king who decided to get in prison for 40 years. But yeah, um, mostly I like people. So I'm really looking forward to reading the books, which I'm doing right after this. So stick around, subscribe. I'm going to be doing like readings and reviews and all of that. So yeah, I should stick around. And for now, I hate Matt. Tell them I didn't make it back. Well, there is always the option of gentling, and then you can become a green's warder. And that's, that could start a new trend. Gentled men becoming warders. It gives you a purpose, a bond, and if you get chosen by the right Ajar, more things. So this wasn't the last battle. This wasn't the last battle, Lon. We still have to fight one to get Malkier back. <laughs> and in the last scene, we got pirates. Now, I think for the book readers, you guys know what this is about. And it's probably a really big cliffhanger, but I don't know what that is about. And there was a really big wave. I have never seen a big wave, not even like an average sized one, because I've only seen like really tiny ones. Because in like Dubai, they have like barriers that stop the waves from getting too big and like keep you safe. So, yeah, just I've only been around safe stuff and I'm really glad. I do not want to face a wave that big. <laughs> so that was it for this video. Really hope you guys enjoyed. And if you did, give me a like. Also, comment below and let me know. That... So that was it for this video. Really hope you guys enjoyed. And if you did, give me a like. Also, comment below and let me know. Out of the 14 books, which one is your favorite? Let me know that and also subscribe, click the notification bell so you'll be notified every time I upload, especially when I upload about the books. And we should get to 2000 now, like that's the next goal is set, 2000. So yeah, subscribe and follow me on my Instagram, it's at lnf underscore fox, my Twitter is at lnf fox and my edits channel is at lnf edits. Go do your thing with them. And yeah, that is it. I'm the only lnf fox in this world and I have another question for you guys. Do you remember why I came to become such a big fan of Landmon Dragran? If you have watched my previous videos, you would know. If you haven't, it's okay. Take a guess. Let me know your answers in the comments and bye!